Mamonetis, we love you, yes, we do. You, Mamonetis, Mama, 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 Mama Nefties, Mama Nefties, we love you. I just had to begin with that song. I was listening to it on the way over here. Hello, everybody. I'm back. And thank you once again for indulging me. Um, today, I, again, felt that I need to speak with you all. Um, I remember when I first went to Facebook against uh, the warnings of some of my friends and other spiritual groups about the uh, potential treatment that I would get or not get there. I joined the Rethinking AIDS group and uh, was establishing myself, you know, getting everybody hopefully to see that it's the simple truth. HIV was never proved to exist. So all the incredible scientists and people that were part of that group, I felt, were wasting time and energy discussing things that you know, showed off their skills and talents, but it wasn't translating to helping people, a lot of whom were from Africa, uh, when Africa was under attack, and we now know that at one point, 75,000 people per month were being murdered in Africa, and it was being called AIDS. But anyway, I went into that group there, uh, and someone said, you know, as I was establishing myself, they said, well, you know, you know, whenever you die, somebody's going to say, well, you died of, he died of AIDS, he died of HIV AIDS. And I responded back to that person, no, when I die, people will say he helped save a lot of lives because he had the courage to tell the truth of his own personal experience. And it seemed that that reply got a lot of great response. And um, from that point, you know, I think my, uh, the way people saw me in the group, um, uh, and and in this field of HIV descent as someone uh, to be reckoned with. So, uh, here again, uh, um, I wanted to come before you all on today and explain to you who I am and what I'm all about and what my experience is. So, if something were to happen to me on today or tomorrow or whenever and I'm not here, you won't have to make it up. You know, people have, have, a, have a way of uh, distorting truth uh, when, when talking about things. And, you know, I've been forthcoming about this uh, entity, uh, I believe, attached in my rectal area. There are other things. Some, You know, Bobby Hemant has said that the Christ will burst this time, not in a manger, but through the ass. So I wonder if it's related to even that. Um... And so uh, today uh, and yesterday, uh, the pain came back. Uh, it's like a, a little ball, you know, the, the proctologist said it was a, a, a cute case of a pimple, but this is much larger than a pimple and it is on the inside. It's like it used to be such a size and located where I couldn't even grab it to squeeze it. You know, I thought about puncturing it, but then I didn't want to deal with infection. And then, um, uh, but it's larger today. And I wish I could just pop this thing, but, you know, it doesn't have a head on it like a pimple where, you know, you sometimes you pop a pimple and then it explodes to the outside. This would be different, but it is really getting on my nerves. And some days I am thinking I'd rather be dead than dealing with this all day, every day, having to urinate 30, 40 times a day, and each time it's very difficult. You know, Kundalini is a purifying energy, and it is always <clears throat> purifying the body, <clears throat> plus drinking a lot of water. Uh, so just going to the bathroom is, is a pain. Uh, I don't want to get off track. I want to stay focused. Oh, uh, today, in fact, the other day, when I walked a distance to get to the, I believe that, that was Highland Park, 
uh, that night I suffered. Uh, people in my family and other friends, they know, uh, they know I was a tennis player. I played a lot of tennis. I was very good back in my day. I haven't played tennis in about two years now, but... Uh, since this entity attachment that happened about a year ago and has been uh, plaguing me for a whole year, uh, my hands, fingers, and uh, feet, uh, lower leg and toes get cramps that come out of nowhere. So I even had to cut back on the walking that I used to do. Uh, but that little walk I did the other day headed to that program, uh, that night I suffered. Uh, cramps. It's like this thing is attached in a place where where it clamps down. It's affecting nerves that go down and affect my appendages. You know, so it's just so weird and I am so sick of it. So I might make a decision, you know, now knowing what I know about death that I just don't want to deal with this. You know, I keep uh, hoping that the Divine Mother which uh, we're going to talk about today. I do have my list again. Um, uh, we'll come on in and we have that twinkling of an eye experience or whatever that what that would be and the monster souls and all of that. And then um, that's why I feel that I am hanging on because I want to be a part of that. Um, you know, I went into this field of exposing bogus HIV because I was so traumatized by it and I had so many friends to be murdered. And I could see all the younger people who were grown in the paradigm that HIV does exist were who were going to get caught up. And I wanted to share information with them to give them an opportunity to have make a different decision about uh, submitting themselves to that HIV test, which we have since learned so much more about. And I sing all about how people should never take that test and should talk to people about not taking that test. Are you all doing that? I wonder. You know, the commercials still keep rolling on television, you know, and, uh, and, and and our people are so gullible and dumbed down and then feeling guilty and ashamed about sex and sexuality. It's easy to route a person into that death campaign and the killers recognize that. So, uh, you know, I, I've been doing all this work hoping to dent the financial proxies of people who ruined my life took the lives of my friends you know all the career things and just everything that has happened since we first heard about HIV I hate it but I live with it and so I'm doing everything I can all day every day to expose what has happened and you know people can think whatever they want to think the last thing I care about is what people think about me because they're not doing anything to help me who's going through this thing other than talk about how handsome I am or other ridiculous stuff so while that does make you feel good when you're out here exposing yourself and risking your talent and doing all these things, you know, it's not enough. And all these years I've been doing it, you know, I've been living with this, this thing for 23 years. No laws have been changed. Black men are continuing to be locked up in prison. You know, what are y'all doing out there? Anything? If you are, I can't tell. And I don't think you really care. You know, when, when the results are that nothing changes for me, so, you know, I, I had to get that off my chest. And you need to stop and think. Because I'm not the only one. I just happen to be the only one who has the courage to speak up about it. You know, I have a young buddy uh, in his mid-20s. He's in Amsterdam. You know, he's an actor, dancer. You know, he was over there. And I think because he's been motivated by having found my work and saved his own life. His, all of his friends there in New York were trying to encourage him to get on those drugs and he has not done that. He's moved on with his life and he's dancing before people doing African dance and all the other things that he does because he has seen that you can transcend that. But I don't know, you know, because he's not me, he's not an activist, whether he's dealing with any of the other things. So I still feel alone. But, you know, at least I have the courage to speak up for you. And again, I hope you appreciate that. But anyway, the Divine Mother needs to come on in here and lift this veil and take some action. Because your children are out here suffering. And everybody's been waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. And we want something to be done while we're still stuck here in the head. So I wanted to talk about her a little bit today. And that uh, a veil of illusion that no one has lifted, that it'll be up to her to lift for us. Um, 
uh, in the mythology, uh, we learned more about uh, what happened to her and how she still was able to trick Zeus into putting a little bit of light in humans. And therefore we have the little bit of senses that we have now. But then also uh, Prometheus who uh, stole fire and, and gave it to us. And that is the Kundalini energy that has lain dormant in the base of the spine and it is gaining energy. And she is re-emerging. We will not, uh, those of us whose Kundalini is awakened, we will not have to reincarnate. And so just, just knowing that again, I'll mention that that, that helps. But we have to understand that we are living in patriarchal society. You know, Zeus, uh, the father of patriarchy, you would say, hate apparently hated the divine feminine principle and women. And we, we, you know, women are the ones who give birth and endure those pains. Women are the ones who are oppressed and abused. Uh, and it, the cause for the needs for feminism and all those things that wrote out the divine mother and took power. And so they have a vested interest in doing all they can to sublimate kundalini energies. And people like me, if we live through it, we deal with all that that entails. Which, they really can't stop it because she is coming back. That is a prophecy. Everybody knows that. But they still are doing everything they can to, to sublimate the kundalini energy. And, and I think that leads all the way down to this attack on my body. And all the HIV stuff and the, and the police and the DUI, all those things, all that is related to a system, a system that puts in place the suppression of the divine feminine. You know, even these uh, over macho people in these uh, so-called spiritual groups putting down uh, homosexual people like myself, even though we've taught them about the healers of the tribe, the gatekeepers and how we're not mentally ill. But they don't want to give that up. Because they're too stuck in their egos and their loins. Now, I said it. Deal with that. Because it's the truth. But the Divine Mother is coming back in and balancing the energies within all of us. It has nothing to do with our gender or our sexuality. It is about being balanced human beings uh, before whatever happens in this earth illusion, life in hell, this nightmare, is able to end. But until that time, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going every day enduring the suffering that goes along with uh, being part of this process of her return. And I'm, you know, I'm about at my, my end of being able to deal with all that. And, you know, maybe, you know, you know, I need to just move on and be back with my friends who were murdered, be uh, back with uh, people who's other, whose children I have helped who did transition and are saying they're in a better place and all that. You know, you know, I think we've been so conditioned to love life that we don't realize that it is illusion, a series of events that never really happened. You know, Bobby Hammond speaks so eloquently about that. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to move on down my list here. Um, uh, since I don't watch television until I go visit my mom, I may catch up on some of the old uh, reality shows or whatever. Uh, but uh, I have noticed that I tend to watch series on Netflix. I watch The Crown, Shaka Zulu, and The House of Cards. I'll call attention to those. And I want to talk about uh, a little bit about those. Um, hope, hopefully, hopefully be able to uh, do a good job of ex expressing how I feel. You know, that movie, The Crown, you know, Whoever made that movie is expert in making movies. It is such a spectacular production. Uh, and recall that I did go to Ghana and I took pictures in Queen Elizabeth Park. Even that is covered in, in The Crown. But, you know, I want to talk about, uh, you know, her ancestors, uh, the King of England and all you know that line of them. And all of them came into being as the Divine Mother was written out and patriarchy was coming in, all those male kings and all the horrible things they did to seize power. All the horrible things that they did, which are depicted, you know, in the movie, you know, 